Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me on my channel and welcome back to my channel if you are a returning person. That, for some reason that makes me feel like you're an alien. Like, the way I phrased it, not because you came back. Okay, so anyway, the... I appreciate all of you for coming to watch this video. So, we are going to be talking about the dark history of the General Wayne N, which for some reason I keep forgetting the name of this place because it's got such a strange name. Like, I don't know why I just can't remember the name. General Wayne N. General Wayne N. Why is that such a weird name to me? Anyway, so it's got kind of a weird history, so um, there's going to be some ghost activity. There's going to be murder. So if you're interested in what's going on at this place, then I suggest you chill out, you hang out, you grab a snack, and we'll get right into the story. Okay, so the General Wayne Inn is located in Marion, Pennsylvania, but I also have it in Philadelphia, so I've never been there, so, like, I'm guessing they're really close to each other, like, uh, I'm get or it's like a little suburb of Philadelphia or something, so, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Anyway. So, Benjamin Franklin stayed there, and George Washington, and my favorite, Edgar Allan Poe, who wrote part of his poem, The Raven, there. So, that's really exciting to me. I would have loved to have checked this place out and maybe stay there, but it is no longer a functioning inn, which I think is kind of sad. But it is on the National Registry of Historic Places, so they can't just, like, tear it down i hope so but yeah we'll get to that later on so we'll talk about it in a bit the general wayne inn was also featured on unsolved mysteries and the first time that it aired like officially was october 26 1988 um and then later it was featured on forensic files which I don't know the official air date for that episode, but we're going to talk about that later as well. So, yeah. All right, so now we're going to get into the hauntings and the spooky stuff, which is my favorite part. I don't, I don't know, actually. Like, there's so much going on with this place that, like, it's kind of hard to pick, like, what part is, like more exciting like it's got an interesting history like Edgar Allan Poe was there and like friggin it's haunted so like which which do you pick I mean obviously not the murder because that's just like that's sad but like the ghost or Edgar Allan Poe I don't know I don't know just too much exciting stuff Okay, so first we'll start off with some of the like little stuff. There were um, reports of things being moved around, of course. Things like towels being thrown around the kitchen. Machines not working, which could be connected to ghosts. Or it could be more like, eh, my machine's just acting up again. So, I don't know. I don't know about the machines. The machines could just be machines being machines. But the towels moving around and being thrown around, that's a little bit of another story. And then they had, of course, like, just your, like, sightings, like shadows, people seeing the corners of their eyes, like, they'd be like, what was that kind of thing. Then, now we're getting into, like, the bigger stories. Um, 1987, there was a valet guy, he was walking out 
in the parking lot and he was passing a car that had already been parked there owner already had the keys and the car started like flashing its lights and it's started like its windshield wiper started just wiping they just started going and the horn was like blaring like continuously blaring so he had no explanation for why it would do that the car keys were with the owner inside and like the car had already been valeted he valeted himself so he had no idea why this would be happening and so the car owner had no idea why it would do that either he had to go get the car owner to turn the car off because he had the keys so that is crazy like it's a crazy experience to me i wonder if maybe they like ended up sending out like a you know like a notice to that person like hey this might happen to your car please come send it in like i don't know what those are called the the car notices when like there's malfunctions with your car you know what i'm talking about all right so at this one time there was a manager by the name of barton johnson and he was working at the bar one night and it was a busy night so there were a lot of men and women in the bar and there were mostly these women sitting at the bar all the way down the bar and he said that he watched as these women kept turning around and either angrily or like confused saying did you do that or what the heck did you blow on my neck and the men behind him would be like what are you talking about or i didn't do that or what are you stuff like that you know like he watched as the entire like bar down this line every woman down the bar was like what are you doing and the ghost just like was blowing on each and every woman's neck down the bar so uh he got to watch as the ghost like entertained itself that night in the bar and he said it was one of the craziest things he's ever seen so that's pretty interesting the ghost was bored so he just was like on every single like woman's neck down in the bar so i don't know man ghosts be bored sometimes guess they gotta do something to pass the time like they've been there for a while all right then we have a guy named dave rogers who was closing up one night and getting ready to go home when i guess allegedly he saw a disembodied head just chilling on top of a chest of drawers just like just like the head i don't know what the head was doing like if it was just sitting there or if it was making a face at him but just a head just a disembodied head just chilling that would spook me if it was just a head i really don't know what i would do in that situation honestly i'd be like where's the rest of you all right and then we have a lady named alice who was hearing her name being called out so she walked around to the foot of the stairs but she saw a man in a green uniform and she just kind of stopped dead in her tracks and she was like shocked so and i mean i would be too because i mean full-bodied apparition of like a man in a revolutionary war uniform so and that's what she saw and it was like green with a yellow trim and apparently this this apparition had been seen multiple times the first time being um, in 1848 by another woman who was retrieving some ballots in the basement. And the basement is like the most common area to see this apparition, apparently. Because, apparently, 
that's where he either died or had been hiding. During the Revolutionary War, there were a lot of Hessian soldiers that wore the same type of uniform that were stationed in Philadelphia at the time. So it makes sense that there would be a ghost at the, at the General Wayne Inn that would look similar to the Revolutionary War Hessian soldiers that were stationed there at the time, right? So that's why it's believed that he's a Hessian soldier from Revolutionary War time. Oh, and I mentioned earlier that there was a woman that was getting ballots for an election. There was an election held in 1848 at the General Wayne Inn, but back then it wasn't called the General Wayne Inn. It was called something else, but that's beside the point. All right, and we do have one more strange event that happened at the General Wayne Inn that we don't have an explanation for, and this is right before we get to talking about some other things that happened at the General Wayne Inn. So, there was a TV special that was happening that they were using as an event because it was about the General Wayne Inn and they wanted to do a special about it since they were the General Wayne Inn. It was a Halloween special that they were doing on the local news and they wanted to feature themselves as the spotlight. They were excited and they had a bunch of guests that were going to watch it. So, they turned on their segment, they were having dinner, and the TV, as soon as the segment about the General Wayne Inn started, the TV slowly started turning clockwise. Not the TV, but the TV program. And it did this until the segment was over, so everybody got to view... A segment that just kept spinning clockwise the entire time, slowly. I mean, they got to hear the audio just fine, but the picture was messing up. So, I mean, that's a strange thing to occur. So, the TV was not broken. The TV was never reported to have any issues of any kind before this incident. So there's really no explanation that they could give for what happened that night. And there was a room full of witnesses. So we don't really know what happened then. All right, now we're moving into the 90s. And this is a little bit darker than ghosts. So... I mean, I guess it's how ghosts are made. This is the murder part of the segment of this video. So, the segment of this video... Does that make sense? Or is my brain just, like, not functioning at all today? Alright, so... We've got two business partners who purchase the General Wayne Inn. And the partners are Guy Saleo and Jim Webb. So, Guy Saleo is like the business manager and he handles like, you know, running the front end of the business where like, you know, you do your hiring and firing, you're paying the employees, the boring stuff, but the important stuff. And then Jim Webb is this guy that he, like, he's running the kitchen. So he will handle, like, the kitchen employees, like, reprimanding them and everything and teaching them how to do the stuff and training. But he's not going to, like, do the, like, he'll probably hire and fire his employees, but he's probably not going to do the payment Processing stuff. Well, that is the uh, that doesn't even matter. Okay, like, but that's what he's gonna do. So he's gonna do the kitchen stuff. Anyway, we got off on a tangent on that. Jeez, just like wow. 
Okay, so like I said, they purchased this thing together. These guys end up taking out life insurance policies on each other in the amount of $650,000. So, this isn't uncommon for business partners to do, but these two decided to do it, and they were going to have a great time together. They had previously had another business affair together. Affair is not the right word. Venture is a better word. <laughs> okay, so anyway, so they had this business thing that worked really well, so they were like, let's... Let's take a bigger chunk, man. Let's let's get this thing like going, you know? Like let's get a piece of history involved. So that's I think a reason why they went to the general lane in. They started doing it and it wasn't doing so well. So the general lane in was a little bit more upkeep as it was older and it just wasn't quite the venture that they were hoping for. So things kind of took a turn for the worse when it came to the general way in and their relationship as business partners. Okay, so December 27th, 1996, Jim Webb is found dead and a 911 call is made that it looks like he has fallen and hit his head because he has a giant lump on his forehead and it looks like he hit his head on the open cash register and so police come and they do an investigation but they found a spent 25 caliber round in the cash register that's open. So they do some more investigating and they find that he has in fact been shot and that the lump is actually a failed exit wound because the bullet went in but it couldn't fully escape so that's what the lump is. That there's actually a bullet in there that didn't fully exit. So they decide not to release this information because everybody thinks that he fell and hit his head and that's how he died. So they're going to say, okay, nobody released this information. It's between us and the killer. So they don't release this information and that's where they end up kind of getting the information from somebody very important. But, just you wait, just you wait. So, backtracking a little bit to see like how things were doing with the business, it was discovered that Jim felt like he had been doing a lot of the work because he was, he was managing a lot more than he thought that he needed to because Guy was messing around with the waitresses, he was cheating on his wife, he was drinking and goofing off a lot, and it was a bit of a point of an argument, and Jim thought that he was just going to leave at the first of the year, and he was going to leave the partnership as well. Now we're going to look into some more evidence, and where everybody was. Guy had an alibi, for the night that he was shot, Jim was shot. So, um, Guy, he was cheating on his wife, so he was out with a girl named Felicia Moyes, who was also the assistant chef at the General Wayne Inn. And, I mean, it's lucky he had the alibi, because he had actually purchased a gun three weeks before the murder of Jim. So police wanted anyway to test that gun and see if it matched the round that had been shot. So they decided to check and see if the gun matched the round that came out, but it didn't match. So they were like, all right, good. So it doesn't match. 
looking good for you. Plus, you got that alibi. So, yeah. That's looking good for you. But they did also know that whoever was responsible for Jim's shooting, they did know that they had to know the General Wayne Inn pretty well because I guess the office that Jim was found in, for one, the steps were really creepy. So he had to know who the attacker was and they had to kind of be expecting him or comfortable enough with him to, like, know those steps would be creepy or creaky and... Plus, he had to also know where that office was because it was, like, kind of hidden from, like, other rooms in the general lane. And because I guess, like, I don't know, like, the way it was set up was kind of strange. So... A lot of people at the inn that worked with Jim and Guy, they remembered seeing Guy with a different handgun. And they were like, hey man, you still got that Beretta. Because they remembered it was a Beretta. And the gun that he had just recently bought was a Phoenix. So... And they're both, they both use the same type of ammo, which is a 25 caliber. So he's like, hey, um, so he gets asked by someone, he's like, hey, do you still have that Beretta? And he's like, no, man, I, I got rid of it. It didn't work. And like, blah, blah, blah. Like, I, or, I didn't like it. That's like another thing he might say. So the police end up putting a wire on some of the people that work there when he, like, asked these questions. And, because the police asked him if he had another gun, and they're like, no, man, I don't have it. And he's like, I never did have another gun. And he just straight up lied to the police. So, when they did this, he admitted to the other people that he worked with that he did have a Beretta, so they knew he was lying about that, and he would say things like either he didn't like it or he it didn't work, so he sold it or got rid of it. So, that's how they caught him on the fact that he did have a Beretta at one time. So, they asked him at some point if he could... If they could borrow his holster just to, you know, check for, like, residue or something from the Phoenix. I don't remember what excuse they gave, but he was like, yeah, sure, you can, you can borrow it. But he didn't know that that was going to be, like, the smoking gun. Haha. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so, that actually gave him away. And... That's how they ended up catching him because they took the seams apart and they were able to find that he had uh, held two guns. Ooh, bitch, what do you think you're doing? Hey, eh? anyway, um, they were able to find that he held two guns in this holster uh, and... One of them matched his phoenix, which is all fine and good, but they had found that one was, in fact, the Beretta. So they were like, we got you now, bitch. So that's how they figured out that he was a liar and a murderer. They never found the Beretta, but... um. They were able to find out that, you know, he had the Beretta at one time. They did find out also that the assistant chef, Felicia, this happened a little bit before they um, found out that he 
was the guy. She, on February 22nd, 1997, was found dead in her house just two months after Jim, and she had died from an apparent gunshot wound to the head that was self-inflicted. So rest in peace to her. And they believed that this was... This was because she felt guilty that she found out that she had been used as an alibi. So she not only was being used by her boyfriend in in a, for, to be in like a fake relationship, but she was being used for an alibi. And I couldn't imagine what that would feel like to be used in like two different ways like a the guy doesn't even like like you or that's at least how you feel and then two like he was just using you for like this fake relationship for an alibi so that would really feel <sighs> awful and man so, rest in peace to Felicia. I do hope she's at peace. And to anyone out there watching this, suicide is not the answer. So, just know that there are other ways and other outlets. So, there are plenty of things that we can do in the world. And we don't, we don't need to turn to these awful ways. So... So, after all of that, you may be wondering, why did he buy the other gun? So, the other gun was, like, kind of his insurance policy for the Beretta. He wanted people to remember that he had a gun, but he didn't think that people would remember specifically what kind of gun it was. So... Whenever he had the gun, he, he just expected people to be like... Oh, yeah, he bought a gun, and it, I don't know, it was just run-of-the-mill gun. But they specifically remembered Beretta, you know, like, they were like, yeah, he's, he's got a Beretta, and it's this and that, and it wasn't that Phoenix that he had. So, it kind of backfired on him. Like, everything I say for some reason is like a gun reference in this. So, anyway, so... He felt kind of dumb, I'm, I'm sure, whenever people were like, Yeah, you got that bread on you. So, like, I mean, he, he wanted, I think, to outsmart the police. Because, but he was also kind of stupid for having the Beretta because the Beretta got him in more trouble because at some point in the, in the investigation, they found a bullet from where he parked his car across the street from the General Wayne Inn. And the bullet was ejected because this gun had, like, this compartment where, like, it lifted up and ejected a bullet. Like, whenever he went to, like, you know, whatever that means. Uh, I forget what the term is. I don't know. I'm not a gun person. So anyway, like, he does this movement. Cock the gun? I don't know. Anyway, and this gun has, like, an ejection chamber that, like, pops up and, like, ejects, ejects a bullet. And he did this where he parked his car by a dumpster across the street, like I was just saying, before we had to get all technical with gun shit. Anyway, so, it, like, goes out there, and, like, they found this bullet, and they didn't find a gun, so they were like, okay, so, that's weird. But now, they put the pieces together and realize that, oh, it's from this Beretta with the special ejection chamber. Which I don't remember what's called because uh, my brain didn't retain that information, so I'm sorry. But I I know what it, like it it looks like in my head. So let me just like <clears throat> yeah. 
You got it? Okay, good. So, now we're on the same page. Sweet. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Now you know. Okay, so, the motive was the life insurance policy. He knew that Jim was going to leave the partnership, and he he wanted to get in on the life insurance policy before that partnership was going to be over because he wasn't going to see any money if Jim left and was alive or... Yeah, because, like, I mean, if he leaves, there's no partnership to be had. If there's no partnership, he's not going to die. And he's not going to get no money. So he was like, well, better kill him. Like, why can't you just, like, accept the fact that, like, the dude's going to go live his life. And you're just not going to have the partnership anymore? I mean... You didn't have the $650, $650,000 before. Like, isn't it fine that you don't have the $650,000 after the partnership is over? I mean, it, it's to, I mean, it's not worth the person's life just so you have $650,000. Isn't that obvious, though? Like, I feel like... Feel like shouldn't have to explain that to some people, but but you know, I guess guess those bad seeds out there they just they don't understand for some reason. Guy Saleya was convicted of first degree murder, and he was getting he was getting. He was given a life sentence. I don't know if he has the possibility of parole or not because I couldn't find any information on it. Um, hoping not because, like, that's just rude, man. Like, all you wanted was money. And, like, all Jim wanted was to see his kids grow up, I'm sure. And to, like, you know, not be murdered for money. I wonder what he did with the Beretta. Did he pawn it? Like, I'm sure police looked into that. And they would have mentioned something if they did. So I wonder what he did with the Beretta. Anyway, um, in 2005, the... General Lane Inn was purchased, and it was turned into a synagogue, and a, what do they call those? Ugh. Why is my brain just, I have the, like, literal word in my brain, and I can't, like, spit it out. You know, like a city center. Town hall? No. Let me just look it up. Jeez. General Wayne in. It was turned into a synagogue. Community center. Yep. That's what it's called. Community center. My brain is on fire. I don't feel very good today, so that's probably why. So, <laughs> yes. So, uh, a synagogue of all things, like, I was kind of surprised. I was like, oh, a synagogue? Really? I actually don't know if anything has happened since it's been turned into a synagogue. I haven't heard any reports or, like, it's not been in the news. So, it's happening to keep, like, it's good name i don't know the name of the synagogue or anything like that so i can't like tell ya i want to know if they're having like stuff happening like you know stuff ghosty stuff so 
that's all I know. That's all I know about the General Wayne Ed and like what they're doing and stuff. So if you have any information, you know, like maybe you go to the synagogue there. Uh, let me know how it is. Tell me if you like it. And uh, yeah. Thank you all so much for joining me in this video today. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you could stand my brain being really stupid throughout this whole video. Like, what's, what's the deal with my brain? I don't know, that's for sure. So, I apologize for all the brain farts I have been having. But... If you could handle that, then hopefully you could handle me at the absolute worst. Because <laughs> I'm sure it's yet to come. I'm sure. So. Uh, what do you guys think of the ghost stories and the murder story? And did you like it? Did you like having both at once? Because, like, I love talking about both of them at once. Like, I thought it was so cool to have, like, a story where I could talk about two of my favorite like kinds of things at once uh i was watching unsolved mysteries and like i was like i've never heard of the general way and so i looked it up and i was like whoa like this place is amazing it's got ghost stories and a murder story like an edgar allen Poe stayed there and i was just like this place blows my mind so i had to talk about it in a video so um yeah, just let me know what place you want me to talk about next or what story you want me to cover next. Um, if you've subscribed already, thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't, definitely subscribe and let me know what you want to see. So I will see you all in the next video. Bye.